Welcome to Sharing the Word. I'm your host, Dr. Driver. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord, and he Welcome to Sharing the Word. I'm your host, Dr. Driver. My friends, thank you again for tuning in and watching us on our media network. Uh, you can watch us on our uh, media network, which is sharingtheword.tv. You can also watch us on YouTube by hitting subscribe and notifications. And you can watch us on Galilee TV. That's G A L. A-L-E-E TV on any Roco device. Now that's a TV channel uh, specializing in uh, what I call favorite classic television like the Lucy Show, Bonanza, uh, cartoons like Superman. I mean there's just a lot of great stuff there on that channel and you can also watch us on video on demand as well on their library. Today, uh, I wanted to go over what you probably have been watching, our Take 5 series. Uh, we did the uh, part 1 through 4, I believe, on the test for knowing if someone's a believer. And, and i got to be honest with you, uh, we've, we've been to church. I've been to church. You've, been, <laughs> you've probably been around a, a lot of Christian circles. And we're trying to understand, is it really by the fruits of the Spirit? Yes, it is. Galatians talks about the fruits of the Spirit. Uh, but we can also look at what Jesus says uh, in Luke. Uh, if you look at the Gospel of Luke as well, you know, when it talks about out of the heart, the mouth does speak. And one of the things that I guess I get bothered by, we sometimes think that fruit looks real when you see it on a painting. You go, wow, so that's real fruit. But how do you know that the artist that drew that picture uh, did not uh, have fake fruit, artificial fruit, in that bowl. So you can't distinguish between real fruit and artificial fruit when an artist puts it on canvas and he, and he draws it, he paints it, he colors it, whatever, how you want to do it. My wife's an artist, so I kind of understand what's going on there. I can make something that's artificial look real. So a Christian has to say, you know, the fruits of the spirit of peace, love, joy, goodness, self-control. Okay, but the number one gift, here's the key, the number one gift of the fruits of the spirit, and it's even in uh, 1 Corinthians 13, is love. My friends, what distinguishes us between unsaved and saved is by the love we show one another. Now, I got to be honest with you. Uh, you know, in Jesus' dictionary, I, I just see love and hate. I don't see like. <laughs> now, he does say the kingdom of heaven is like. <laughs> like what? It's a, it's a form of description. You know, the Holy Spirit came, uh, the, the artist, <laughs> not the artist, but the, you know, the writer of the scriptures says the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus at baptism like a dove. Not a dove like a dove does. Now, how does a dove? Okay. So Christians can have the fruits of the Spirit. Peace, jo peace love, joy, goodness, self-control can have all these things. But then how genuine or how authentic are those fruits? Are they real fruits? Can someone pretend to love you? Can someone pretend to, you know, show you kindness? Are their motives pure? Uh, th there are many signs uh, to determine if what somebody's actions are real, genuine, uh, authentic. And we, we got to go, well, wait a minute. It seemed kind. It seemed loving. It seemed, uh, you know, polite. But what's the person's motive? Now, when you look at a kind act, altruistic act, Altruism is one of the things that most people don't even measure uh, because they think something like going out and giving something to someone who's less fortunate is always altruistic. But yes, it is. But at the same time, there's motives attached to it. You know, the Bible says the test of a man is based on the praises that he receives. Yeah, the praises he receives. 
Don't let your own words, you know, proclaim or boast of your accomplishments. Let somebody else do it. The Bible tells us that. So, you know, what is going to be the true test to know if someone is a believer? And I believe from the scripture, we're going to get into 1 John, and we're going to get there in a second here, but I believe one of the biggest tests is, is truly the love we show one another. Now, Jesus is, is on the cross dying for our sins, and he, you know, he cries out, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. That's love. Forgiveness, yes. Now, Stephen is being stoned in the book of Acts, chapter 7, and you can look at that and say, wow, he said the same thing Jesus said. He looked up into heaven, you know, and he said, Father, you know, Lord, forgive them, hold this Hold this crime, this act that they're doing to me. Don't, don't hold it against them. Please forgive them. That is truly the mark of a true Christian. That's my measuring stick. That's my rubric. If, if you want to get into academic uh, pedagogy here. But I guess, you know, I, I guess I get tired. <laughs> I get tired of wondering why people don't show love anymore. Now, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not, you know, boast. It does not. Oh, there we go. See, read 1 Corinthians 13. So love is the true test to determine if someone is truly a child of God. But there's other tests too. Now, we can get into 1 John. We can get into Peter. We can get into James. The Bible tells us to pray for discernment. There are more people today that at Christian-y, or Christian-based, Christian-like, than Christians by labeling, or people who go to church. Why are there more kind people, more loving people, um, people who give to those who are less fortunate, that are not what I would call born again, saved, you know, saved by the blood of Jesus. They're not, they're not Christians at all. They won't, they won't proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord. But I've seen more kind people, more loving people, more generous people that characteristically come from the Word of God that have the Christian type characters uh, of God. Then, then I see people, you know, wow, that claim to be a believer. I'm like, wait a minute, why is a non believer showing Christ like traits than a person who claims they're a believer and goes to church? Hmm. Now, you could ask yourself that question. But again, there's a test of knowing more than just what the love act is. A love is patient, love is kind, it does not boast, it doesn't keep records of, I get off, that's great. First Corinthians 13, powerful. But I'm talking about the spirit of discernment as well. Now, you can discern if someone is true or fake or phony. I can, you can, I, I hope everybody can. The Pharisees were called out by Jesus, called them a whitewashed tombs, hypocrites, brood of vipers, because they were phony. They didn't show love. They didn't show Christ. They didn't show God, if you will. The Torah was very clear on how they should behave, but they violated it. So, my friends, the test of knowing if somebody is a believer is not about doing what I call Christian ease or altruistic acts that are laid out. And civilization has a social act of uh, uh, benevolence. Because I can be kind to you. And somebody go, oh, that's loving. That's kind. Yes, it is. It's supposed to be that way. It is supposed to be that way. But God looks at the heart of man. My friends, this is the test. <laughs> I'm getting to my test here. The test is the heart of man. By their heart, you will know them. Two people can give. Uh, a cup of water to somebody who's thirsty. One's a believer, one's a non-believer. The person who is thirsty just doesn't care who gives them the water as long as somebody gives them the water, right? What if the non-believer gives the person the water first? Okay, well, well, is there a race? No. Okay, but out of the two, one's unsaved, one is saved. What if both of them do it? The bo Both of them are give them a, a standing ovation. But here's the point. God looks at the heart. 
I believe the unsaved did a, a great act if he meant it by his heart because his heart is good. He's just not a born-again believer. Okay, the born-again believer does it from his heart. That's good too. So what I'm getting at is an unsaved and a saved person can do a loving thing, a nice thing from their heart. And the only thing that's missing from the unsaved is they haven't made Jesus Christ their Lord and Savior. But those are the acts that God looks at, you know, when it comes to measuring us for Judgment Day. You know, many will say in the last days, according to Matthew 7, well, Lord, didn't I feed people? Didn't I do this? Did I not sing? Did I A, B, C, D, E, F, G? And he's going to say, depart from me, I never knew you. And why would Jesus say, depart from me, I never knew you? Because you did not make him Lord and Savior of your life. Romans 10, 9 and 10, 13. All who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. So my friends, the test for knowing if somebody is truly a believer is more than just the acts that we do. I personally, I, you know, I, I wouldn't wish, but I, I hope everyone will do kind acts. You know, help somebody that's, uh, you know, hurting. Help somebody that needs help. You don't have to be, watch this, I'm being careful here. You don't have to do it from a religious standpoint. Do it because that is instinctive. That is what our character, our moral character is supposed to be about. Do those kind things. But how do you know if that person is a believer? Well, if you're doing an act that God says you're supposed to do, and, and, and the only thing you, you lack is the knowledge of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, let me introduce you to my Lord and Savior. Because you're doing it to him too when you give that cup of water to that person. That's the test, my friends. That's the test. Now, we're going to take a break real quick, and then when we come back, we're going to dive into 1 John chapter 2, right after this. Are you tired of mindless content on YouTube? Do you crave content that will uplift and inspire you? Look no further than TLDM Evangelistic Media Network. Our channel is dedicated to bringing you content that will fill your heart and soul with positivity and inspiration. From uplifting sermons and motivational talks to thought-provoking discussions on faith and spirituality, our videos will leave you feeling inspired and ready to take on the world. Subscribe to our channel to join a community of like-minded individuals who are committed to living their best lives and making the world a better place. TLDM Evangelistic Media Network, where inspiration meets faith. Subscribe now and join the movement. Welcome back. We're on our study of the test of knowing if you're a believer. We're talking about does God just measure us by the kind acts that we do? And he does, but it's doing it in Jesus' name. It's doing it because you're a born-again believer. You know, many people say, you know, I always, <laughs> I, when I was pastoring, I, I was telling my church, stop saying I do kind things and that's going to get you in heaven. It, it's not. It's knowing Jesus, making him Lord and Savior. Look, we're all sinners. And sometimes we have to remember that just because you can do a list of things that are kind, doing the nice things does not get you in heaven. It is bowing down and saying, Father God, forgive me for my sins. I believe you sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross for my sins. I need Jesus in my life. Make him Lord of my life. I accept you, Lord Jesus. Oh, I love you, Lord Jesus. Come into my life. I believe you are God, the Son of God. You died on the cross for my sins and rose from the grave. Oh, be my Lord, be my Savior. Mm. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, my friend, if you make Jesus Lord of your life, he's your Savior. He died on the cross not only for your sins, but the sins of the world. John three sixteen and 17. My friends, you're welcome to the family. Now do everything. Oh, do everything in love. Do everything according to the Word of God. Let's look at uh, 1 John chapter 2. Uh, it, 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 it starts off. You know, just getting right to the point, looking at verse 3. Now, by this we know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. 
See, everything I was saying earlier. He who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandment is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says, here we go, he abides in him, ought to himself also to walk just as he walked. Now, what it's really getting at? Is this is plain and simple? I, you guys know my first. For those who are listening for the first time, I'm going to tell you my my favorite scripture verse, Ecclesiastes twelve thirteen. The sum of the matter is this: fear God and obey His commandments. John saying the same thing. The test of a believer is: do you obey God's word? And what's His word? Jesus. God. He said, oh, Israel, here is the commandment of above all commandments. Love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is just as important. Love your enemy as thyself. So love is the greatest commandment. Now, I, I, hey, I, I went into the military. I served 27 years. I can tell you there's a lot of rules. UCMJ, there's a lot of rules you live by. But again... I took an oath to, to defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. So to me, I can make pledges, I can make uh, commitments to a, a code of ethics and live by it and do great. But there is one particular uh, motto that we live by in the military, and it says a naval officer, I was a naval officer, does not lie, cheat, and steal, nor tolerate those who do so. Well, the Ten Commandments, there's the Ten Commandments. Wow. You know, you just go to Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy chapter 5. But when Jesus quoted the greatest commandment, he was in Deuteronomy chapter 6. And he summed up all the commandments from Genesis all the way through. And he said, here's the greatest commandment. Love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is just as important. Love your neighbor as thyself. So I can remember those things. Just like, you know, naval officers don't lie, cheat, and steal, nor tolerate those who do so. So that's the greatest test. And to walk, listen to me, to walk as Jesus walked. Now, how did Jesus walk? He wasn't prejudiced. He sat down with tax collectors. He helped Samaritans, talks to Samaritans. He, he referred to the woman at the well. He, he was a person that helped those <laughs> that were less fortunate. A guy in the tomb who was possessed by a devil or a legion of demons. My friends, these are the things that Jesus taught us that we should do. And if we do those things, as Jesus did, as we just read, then the test of knowing if you're a believer is you are doing the very things that Jesus did. How Jesus walked, you should walk. Read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You read the Gospels, you will know the true test of what it is to be a believer. And one of the tests, again, is loving someone, forgiving someone, helping someone in need. You know, the Good Samaritan is a big example. Those examples that Jesus gave us are the test of knowing if you're a believer. But then what comes out of the mouth will determine are they saved or unsaved. If you say, coming in closing here, if you say Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God, born of a virgin, walked on this earth for 33 years, was perfect God in the flesh, died on the cross for our sins and the sins of the world, and rose from the grave, and is coming back again. If you believe that, the Bible says you are truly a believer of God. If you believe that, my friends, welcome to the family of God. Jesus was born of a virgin. Oh, the Holy Spirit came upon Mary, and Gabriel announced that she will have a son, and he will be the only son of God, the only begotten son of God. I believe that. Oh, yes, I do. And Jesus was perfect. He was God in the flesh. See, my friends, the test of knowing a believer is not a hard test. Anyone can pass that test. You can have the oral exam by confessing that Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son and pass that test. Now, the next test 
is the, the application part, the practicum. Can you now show Christ by loving someone and forgiving somebody? If you can do that, my friends, welcome, welcome to the family of God and showing the world that Jesus Christ is Lord. My friends, I want to thank you for tuning in. Oh, please continue to watch us on our YouTube channel. Hit subscribe and notification. And just visit our website at TLDM, Evangelistic Media Network.com and sharing the word TV. Join me again on another episode of Sharing the Word.